Hello and welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining me in another of my interview series. Today we're going to be talking about common law and you've heard me talk about this and I'm learning all the time and I realised I needed to speak to somebody who knew a hell of a lot more and has spent a long time exploring what common law is and what the other laws that we think we understand is, the acts and statutes and legalese and all of that, is actually about. So let's bring on um, our, my guest today, which is Ruth Skolmly. Skolmly. Uh, Ruth, it's very nice to have you on the show. Sorry about, uh, I practised your name there. It's, um, it's not an English name and I'm not very good when it's a different country. Now, where, what's, where's Skolmly from? That's Norwegian, Richard. Norwegian, oh yes, that's yeah, right. My you husband's did... fault. Fantastic. Uh, but it's, it's a lovely name. It's a lovely name. So, Ruth, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much uh, for coming and agreeing to talk to me about common law um, and the hierarchy of law as well, because we all think that we are um, under the spell of what the government legislates and tells us that we have to do. But uh, as I've been exploring in my videos, uh, it seems to be that's not really the case. No, um, Richard, The uh, I, I just mentioned to you earlier that I did go to law school and um, I spent quite a few years there. And what I've realised in, in the last couple of years is what we're taught at law school is not law at all. We're taught about legislation. We're taught about statutes. We believe that that's all, you know, the most important thing about law but actually the law is very simple and you don't need to go to law school for three years you can learn it in five minutes so i mean <laughs> which, i can which, teach which, you now yes. if you like well but please do i am now your pupil <laughs> right <laughs> so the law instead of millions of pieces of legislation statutes orders regulations rules all of that kind of thing it's very simple it's just we cause no harm no loss no injury i'm sure you've heard that before Yes. We have to act responsibly and proportionately in all the circumstances. So responsibility, uh, responsibly and proportionately, that can give you lawful excuse to cause harm because there may be circumstances where you have to. For example, a doctor may need to cause harm to fix somebody if, somebody, right. if it's an emergency. Or if a house is burning down, you might have to break through the door to get people out. So that's your lawful excuse. To, to cause harm. But otherwise, we cause no harm, no loss, no injury. We are honourable in our contracts. And we have to know that our rights end where another person's begins. So um, I can easily teach you your rights as well. That's very simple too. And knowing the law and knowing your rights um, gives you a clarity of mind, removes all the clouds and the befuddlement that we're living under and gives us clarity of mind so that we can act and act with confidence and courage because we know what we're doing and we know we're doing the, the right thing. Well, I'd love to know what my rights are then, having, oh. having now uh, got my degree in, law, in <laughs> the law. <laughs> thank you very much, Ruth. Uh, what, what are our, our rights, our inalienable, inalienable rights, presumably? Well, I pronounce it inalienable, just to make it even more confusing. Okay. But yeah. a lot of people well, I struggle say... To say... I struggle to say the first version. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I struggle sometimes. Some people say in, inalienable, right? Inalienable. I say, that was it, yes. I say in... inalienable, but inalienable. I won't get into that right now. It doesn't Is that because much. of the li the lean part the lean. of it? Yeah, exactly. that's what I've heard. Yeah. That That's a, that's yeah. a, a technical term, as it were, yeah. or... Yeah, there's etymology behind it, I suppose. Yeah, and it just helps me to remember and yes. just make us sound like aliens. But yes, anyway, no, that's true. Yes. But I know what you mean. I know you mean. Um, right, so there's inalienable rights and there's also all the other rights that you have. So your inalienable rights, I just see it as those that you need to, first of all, exist um, because they are part of natural law. That's how we exist. Then how we survive how we stay alive, and also how we thrive. So we need water, we need food, we need clean air to breathe. We need um, to be able to protect ourselves, to self-defense. We need shelter, you know, from the elements and all those sorts of things. Bodily autonomy, so that no one can touch us if mm. we don't want them to. So these are inalienable rights. And then everything else, all the other rights, 
is everything that's not a wrong. Oh, right. So a okay. wrong. So your the law is to cause no harm, no loss, no injury, and that's wrong to do that. So if you're not doing any of those things, everything else is your right. It's wow. as simple as that. Yeah. So and you that's very do, empowering, isn't it? Certainly empowering. Get embar em empowering. Gets rid of all of the clouds in your mind uh, of of what what's the right, what's wrong. What can I do to protect myself? What can't I do to protect myself? Too much force, too little force. If you need to protect yourself, you have to be able to be confident that you can do what you need to do and not worry about reasonable force and all those idiosyncrasies that go come with the with the legislation. So that's what confuses us. Um, things that we see on the media confuse us. Our education system confuses us, but. All we need to know is what is the law, what are our rights, and we can do anything that we want to do within that. So it's by the fact that it is so simple mm -hmm. that it that, that's, especially in days like today, where everything is complicated, we have this natural feeling, or maybe it's not natural, but we've this tendency to think it can't be that easy that things are, uh, you, you know, you have to go to law school, surely, to to go for three or four years to understand all this stuff so that you can, you know, work it all out. But you, you've just put that over in a couple of minutes, and, and there we go. You could teach that to a child. They understand that. They're going to grow up the rest of their lives. They can choose to do no harm if they wish, and then if they do do some harm, there are obviously consequences they would soon learn, oh, actually, it's probably better just to, you know, I've got so many rights, I've got so much freedom, I've got so many things I can do. What an amazing thing. And what an amazing world we and live in when yes. it's like that. Um, exactly, because nobody's damaging the world or making us restricted and paying huge taxes and keeping us down. So t tell you me just... Become very no. creative you use your creativity and that's how we thrive but it, our creativity is completely just this complete lid on it yes it's we, stifled we're isn't so it? scared to move which is i mean this is the thing so i mean i've been talking about elements of this not not with huge knowledge about it um but as you start talking about it, 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 you know, it percolates or it's been percolating my brain and you start to think, actually, yes, no, I am empowered by this. But then you, you see the restrictions, the council tax thing comes in, a parking ticket comes in, you're told that you can't go down here, there's a stop sign here. You know, all the sort of machinations of government start to sort of compound you and you go, oh, but nobody's going to believe me if I say, but these are my rights or you can't do this to me. So... How do we how do we combat the very fixed, very rigid world that we find ourselves in? Well, um, at the moment, we, we're kind of focused on for, for the right reasons. I mean, we're really focused on the who, what they're up to, the World Economic Forum, the elite, all of these things that are going on, big, big things going on around us. And we want mm. to stop that. But it's the same kind of thing with all the things going on around us locally um that's where we have our power when we, we we get into this what i call a sovereign state of mind clear mind clarity of mind so that we know what the law and our rights are we must hold responsibility comes with that power so we must hold people to account who are around us that's all we can actually do there's no point wasting our time writing letters and to people who will never meet Mm. Deal with the people who are around you. That's my ad advice anyway, and what I try to do. Hold them to account when they are committing a wrong. doesn't matter how small it is. If they're asking you to wear a mask, they're making a claim in a way that you must wear a mask because you have to protect other people or it's for your own protection. Or make them prove that claim. If they're claiming that, they have to prove that claim. Otherwise, because that's your inalienable right to breathe fresh air. Mm. So they're trying to take that away from you, so make them prove it. Don't just let them get away with it, even if it's a shopkeeper and you think, oh, I can't be bothered to go to that shop, then I'll just go to another one. No, hold them to account and stop them from doing it. And when they are stopped, it's it kind of, it's a domino effect. 
you have the small domino. I don't know if you've ever seen that image where there's a tiny domino that knocks over a bigger and a bigger and a bigger one. And at the end, it knocks over a giant domino. That's what we have to kind of envisage when we're doing our notices or writing a letter to people or asking someone verbally to please, you know, prove your claim and don't do that. We are that small domino and we're going to knock over the great big dominoes when we when we do that. And I suppose when you knock over the little when you knock over the first domino, that's that's the biggest point of effort, isn't it? Because the rest yeah. are going by the inertia of that initial push. And yes. if that push is just enough, the tip, you know, you get to the tipping point and then it just carries on and you, you no longer having to do the pushing. It's just that the results are amazing as a, as a result of that first push. Yeah. And, and how do you push back against people? You know, you'll say, for example, you know, they'll say, well, you've got to wear a mask and you'll say, well, that's a claim uh, and prove it. And they say, well, you know, the government told us or it's on the BBC, or scientists have proved all this sort of stuff. How do you get over that challenge that you're challenged back where you go, oh, because uh, <laughs> a lot of people do find uh, confrontation quite difficult? Well, we ironically, this is another part of my, I, I, do, I do courses, you know, short and, and the day courses. And that's another part of it is that we, ironically, we have to fight for peace. This is all about breach of our peace, by the way. This is all a trespass. Everything's a trespass upon us. And it's trespass that breaches your peace. And we are entitled to live in peace. That's another inalienable right. So these are all trespasses and breaches of our peace. So ironically, we have to fight for peace. That's what we have to do. And if we don't f get into confrontation and we don't get into conflict, which we're taught to not do, mm. there's a good reason for that. People don't want us to because... We'll solve all the world's problems if we do that. Yes. Because if you let a small thing go, that can escalate eventually into war. That's uh, how yeah. big it can become. As we're seeing at the moment. Yeah, exactly. So um, when you um, are dealing with your um, people who are in front of you, it's you and them. It's not you against a corporation or anyone they work for. You and if they're making the claim, they are responsible for making that claim, and you have to hold them responsible. So it is it is individual to individual. I, Karen Ruth, Ruth will be will be holding Richard to account if you ask me to wear a mask. Nobody else, just you. And that's how you deal with that. And if they say that it's the government telling you to do this, they have to do their own due diligence if they are reinforcing what they are being asked to do. You don't just follow orders. It's not an excuse to follow orders. So they have to do their own due diligence. And if they're carrying on and asking you to do this and that, then they are responsible for their actions. You're responsible for your own acts and omissions in life. And so that's this, yeah, where it this, comes down to. Um, do you find, though, that, I mean, although you've just told me all of this and I'm very much on the on the same wavelength, mm -hmm. that you find that it, people on your courses or when you do this in, in the real world, as it were, um, yeah. that people find this very difficult, this yeah. because of the indoctrination that we've had for years and years and yeah. our entire um, lived experience has been indoctrinated. And so this sense of liberty and, or freedom, rather, is um, quite difficult to grasp for people, even though it's, it's, it's ours and it's a simple concept. Very much so, yes. Um, but generally, the people who are coming to the courses, they are halfway there already because they realize that something's wrong. Yes. So they're the easy ones to work with because they want to be able to do something about it. It's the others that are <laughs> more difficult. Um, we don't want to judge people. We've been taught not to. We don't want to confront and we don't want to conflict. You, you hear so much about, um, oh, I hate confrontation. You, mm. you hear that all the time. Well, we have to. We have to do because if we don't do it, who's going to do it? We're going yes. to leave it, even if we think, oh, well, the army are there ultimately to help us. Well, why should it be a man or a woman's job in the army? You know, they're only people like we are. So yes. we should do our bit. So so it's quite interesting because you're what you're in, in some ways you're saying 
that although there are these government bodies that are dictating stuff, we don't have to deal with them particularly, unless, of course, it's you know someone from the government who's who's actually come to the door or or is is there in front of us. But ultimately, yeah. they are just another living person yeah. who is giving you an instruction. Yes. And um, so, but you don't have to necessarily deal with the huge bureaucracy you're dealing yeah. with your neighbors and friends and people that you encounter in an everyday life which which makes it seem less um uh what's the word i'm looking for you, you know it's less of a problem to do than if you you know less of a challenge because it's you're manageable only di- it's manageable there you go i knew there was a word out there <laughs> <laughs> it's manageable and it, that's on your doorstep so yes. it's, you, you you might have a few days where you don't have any encounters but then you might have a day where you think oh gosh that's too much in one day mm. but we have to just do what we can and Richard nature requires balance so where this is why we're in chaos because people aren't doing enough to correct the wrongs so in nature if there's a wrong there has to be a right that's equity so we have to um, we, we have to do our bit to, to correct the wrongs by just doing a right. Even if you feel like you're getting nowhere, you're putting a right into nature and that will help to balance everything out. So the more of us doing it, yes, you know, we, we will eventually balance and that's where we, we're getting to now. This message that I'm trying to give, uh, that um, William Keats, giving and uh, didn't you have Edward Fitzgerald on as well I did yeah okay he's also you know there's many of us now doing doing the same message and it's getting across people are starting to hear it now more sorry go ahead yeah no I was just going to ask so if we go back to these these um the, the common law where does that originate from well it's, it, it, this is another confusion because mm. when you go to law school, you're taught that common law is case law. Well, there's an element of, of common law in, in the case law, but it's still judge made law. That's a, a man or woman who's kind of part of the government, although it's a separate branch, the judiciary. They are making that law by interpreting uh, legislation uh, towards the facts of the case. So that's another misconception about what common law is. So it depends what we're actually talking about with common law. Now, I see common law as law of the land that's derived from natural law, from nature. And it's our, how, how people interact with each other. That's what common law is built up from. That's our social contract. And also um, in different parts of the world and different lands, you have customs and traditions. So to me, the common law that when I mention common law, it's common law of the land, which encompasses um, the social contract derived from na- natural law, together with our customs and traditions. In So, for example, I'm in Devon here, and we have cream and jam on our scones. I'm, I'm making a trivial point here now. Mm. And in Cornwall... You're making me hungry, though, now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, no. It is lunchtime. A, yeah, oh, in Cornwall, is. the jam and the cream go on the other way. Yes. So, right? That's a, that's a custom tradition kind of thing so we all have our own different bits and pieces and that's what makes us unique and a bit more interesting Mm. in our lands that's what the common law is to me and and many other people that um you know try to give this message out now it's not the case law precedent that um is is made by a man or a woman in a courtroom that is one size fits everybody yes because, yeah. as you just said, you know, in Devon, you're doing your jam and cream one way and the Cornish are deciding, well, that's all right for you and you're welcome to do that. But we do it this way because that's our tradition and custom. It's not a diktat from a government saying cream and jam must go this way, which effectively what the laws are saying. So how, how is it that we have these statutes and acts that we all obey i was going to say religiously there but it's kind of religious isn't it we obey these things um fearing the consequences and there are consequences given to us if we don't well another thing we weren't taught at law school is the thing that william keats mentions very much and that's our constitution that we have um, a very strong constitution it's made out of several documents I have a couple of slides which uh, I, if, if you, if I yeah. can share my screen, I don't need to do it just just at this second. Oh, okay. So 
sorry, will, I'll do yeah, it before no, we. No, no, that's all right. I may have believe. to fiddle with the controls to do that, but we'll we'll do it. It's, it's fine. Well, we'll tr- we can yeah. try. I'm not very good at this technical stuff either. So, um, um, I'm not saying you're not good. I'm no, sure no, I just, I don't. I just press <laughs> buttons and see what happens. <laughs> So the Constitution, our Bill of Rights and various other documents, they tell us that we can suffer no fines or forfeitures without trial by jury of our peers. Um, And we cannot be prejudiced in any way. And we're not taught that. That's kind of glossed over, you know, even at law school. So... Oh, right. We Isn't that know. weird? Even at law school, as yeah. as potential barristers, lawyers, solicitors and, and all of that. Mm. You, yeah. you, so so that must be, so, sorry to interrupt you. I'm just thinking so that anybody going to a, a lawyer or a barrister or whatever with a case and is saying, but I have this thing called common law. We should have trial by bu- a jury. We have the yeah, constitution. I guess a mist must go over their head thinking, oh, you're just talking mythological nonsense yeah. from their Absolutely. perspective. Yeah exactly what happens and um, I think that's why we have a little problem in the magistrates courts and things like that because they just think when we are going in there and trying to challenge them that we're talking absolutely rubbish and um, you know obviously I have some solicitor friends they they don't they believe that common law is case law that it has no power because we're not getting to that level of understanding and they don't what, why would they want to know? That's the end of their beliefs in what they've been doing for all of those years and what they've invested into. Yes. So it's extremely and, and their financial And their financial reward, of course. I suppose so. I mean, obviously, there's a few who've realised and they're trying to, to speak out as well, but you really are up against it because it's a gigantic system. Mm. And the legal system and the legislation is what holds everything and facilitates everything that's happened to us over the last three years. You think about it, facilitates all the medical industry, the pharmaceutical industry. It facilitates the fear that we have and the control over us. It's facilitated, you know, the Coronavirus Act, and you can Mm. do this and you can do that. That that, that system has facilitated everything. It's very powerful. So how do we combat that? Because, you know, if you don't obey the statutes and the acts you start getting fines you start getting summonses which is an invitation to go and uh, to the magistrates court to uh, to to basically plead your case and then end up paying the fine under whatever circumstances you can beg the, uh, the the magistrate to permit you i suppose and and yet that's wrong it is wrong i think my advice would be because you can come a massive cropper Believe me, um, I have learnt. You, you, it's very hard to stand there in your confidence and get your message across. So you have to start quite small. Maybe start with a, a parking fine and see how you go, or the TV license. Um, do something like that. That's a little bit easier to deal with before you start going in with council tax, because the council tax, which is you know, you're not obliged to pay it, but it's they will make it extremely difficult yes. for you to get away with that. And um, I've been into court and, and faced the magistrates with that one. It's extremely difficult, but we just keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Keep and doing and it. just using that as an example, which I know is a, is a juggernaut of a thing, mm. am I right in thinking um, that the council is a corporation mm. and that they've effectively posted through your letterbox an invoice for something and saying please will you pay us yeah. but there's no contract you've not agreed to it you've not said actually I I yeah that's a good idea quite like that I can have my bins collected there's the fire brigade if my house comes on fire or it gets on fire and, and the police and you know and the street lights and what have you but you've not agreed with them or negotiated and said well actually those street lights could I have them a bit dimmer outside my house and I don't want the LED ones and I'd rather not have 5g And um, I'm not really happy with the sort of wages that you're paying at this great big building. So there seems to be, if you were doing a contract with a a body that was going to take your bins and provide the fire, there would be a lot of negotiation going on that you would do. But they just post something through your letterbox with the expectation that you're just going to cough up at a, a sum that they've decided that you have no agreement to. And you just start paying it but there's there's no contract and it, and i understand there's sort of four pillars of 
contract law mm -hmm. um, that you know has not been agreed to at all. No, that, and so, there's no meeting of the minds. There's no full disclosure. You know, they, there's no signature and there's nobody signed anything. Mm. And without a contract, there is you can have no obligation. For every obligation that you have, there must be a contract in place. It doesn't matter what kind of obligation it is, council tax or, you know, a policeman asking you to do something. You know, where's your contract? You are not obliged to listen to or do anything. You know, you think about your rights. No one can make you do anything unless you want to. And that would be your agreement, which becomes a contract. Everything's so if a, if about a policeman contact. was to stop you, um, you know, just to stop you because, I don't know, a, a, um, a light was out on your car or mm -hmm. you went two miles an hour over and they said, stop here. Mm -hmm. I, I was under the belief that you would be able to turn around to him and say, you know, very nice to meet you. Hello. Uh, but where's the crime? You know, yeah. you've you've prevented me from going on my travelling, in my convenience and uh, my conveyance. But where's yeah. the where's the crime? You know, and they said, yeah. well, your 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 tail lights out, or your you know this that th th you're going faster than the the um, designated area. But if there's there's no harm to a, a, another living person, there is no actual crime. You might sort of take into right. consideration. Well, thank you for the advice about the the light. I'll you know I'll I'll make amends in my own time thank you very much but that you could be fined for these things would be a completely different agreement and and if you could if you were to say yeah okay i'll i will consent with you or i will contract with you to pay you some money uh, then that's again that's different you have to have a contract for that to happen but you might not want to pay no, or something no, like that. no one can no one can demand money from you without a contract because you have no obligation without a contract. Now, with your a light being out, for example, it might be reasonable and proportionate for you to have that light fixed uh, while you're driving down the road so that everyone can see you and know when you're going to break or whatever yeah. like that. So, yes, you, you must go and get that fixed. And as you say, it would be reasonable for the police officer. I'll say an officer. Well, it would be a, there's a difference between a, a constable. Police and a <laughs> yeah. So the constable would say to you, that's fair enough. Go and get it fixed. Have a nice day, yes. and take take your word for it. The officer would try to find you. Find you. It's the same person, but they're one of them's acting outside of their oath, and the other one's acting within their oath to protect and serve people, keep the peace, and do whatever they need need to do to to help us. The officer is more of a, a revenue generating um, or gathering sort of employee. And they'll do everything they can to fine you. So he wouldn't take your word for it and give you a fine anyway. But the constable would understand that it was a, a perfectly, an honest mistake and that you're yes. going to get it fixed. So the speed, sorry, go ahead. No, go on, do the, do the speed one. Well, the speeding, <clears throat> I've got a few of these now. I mean, I'm in my 60s now and I have become a bit of a, you know, I used to just do everything by the book, and now, no, not so much anymore. You're a bit of a so rebel, I've, are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, just kind of testing the system so that yes. I can help other people. Absolutely. And it gives you authority as well, doesn't it? You know, if you're testing the system and you know you've done it. I've got a friend of mine who's constantly telling me, says, well, I'm, I'm out the system. I'm not in it anymore. I, I've done it. I've been there. And, I, and that, that confidence grows the more you do this, presumably. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry, yeah. I interrupted about the speeding. Well, the speeding, uh, remind me to tell you about my clamp before uh, before uh, we finish. Okay. Yes, I will. <laughs> so the speeding, you know, you you know the law now. You have, um, you've caused no harm, no loss, no injury to anybody. You have no contract with anyone. So, and you know that the Bill of Rights and other constitutional documents tell you that there can be no fines and no, no forfeitures and you cannot be prejudiced without... A tr before you've been convicted at the trial by a jury of your peers. So how can this man or woman standing in front of you in fancy dress, they always have to have some fancy dress on, including the, you know, the judges in, in the courtrooms, they all have to wear these outfits so that we ironically believe them. It's a bit of a, a stage show. It's all theatre, isn't it? It's all theatre. Um, but of course they don't know that, that they're, they're doing that. That they, I do believe people believe they're doing everything for the right reason. Yes. So it's not 
personal thing. It's just education, trying to educate. So how can they find you for doing a couple of, you know, you didn't hurt anyone. So what actually was the harm that you yes. caused? But it doesn't always work. And, um, you know, I'm in court in a couple of months time. It was supposed to be the 19th of May, but they've just told, announced to me that they're moving that date where I'm going to try and challenge this. So I don't know how I'll get on, but I'm trying to build up my knowledge yes. by testing the system. And I will be in front of, uh, apparently I'm getting a full trial, which is not a trial by jury. I've tried to get that, but um, I'm going to get a three panel magistrates and potentially a district judge. So that will be very interesting. See how Gosh. I get and, and does that sort of, are you nervous about that? No, not at all. I, I've been terrified all my life of, first of all, speaking in public. And all my nerves, everything's gone. I have no, I've never been as confident in my, I'm not saying I am every single day, mm. but most of the time I feel like I've never felt before. So it's, it's that wonderful. Is, and that's, I mean, you know, this is, this is the thing because people, I think watching this, some people, some people will, will have a vague notion of it because they've been watching what I've been saying and, and I've been exploring this and, and testing the reaction and seeing the comments and what have you. But some people will be watching this for the very first time, of course, or they've been cautiously thinking, I think that Vobes bloke's a bit mad. Um, and they could well be right, of course, on that note. Um, and so some people will be going, is this, can this be, can life be that good? <laughs> you know, can it really be true? Um, tell us about your clamp. Right. Um, what was the clamp for? I think that was a... That, that was a speeding ticket as well. I didn't go to court because I didn't know better at the time. Right. So <clears throat> I had a clamp put on my car 28th of November last year, and it came off on Valentine's Day. So it was there for 70-odd days. Wow. And um, I luckily, we had two cars at the time. So I could do, we only have the one now. But um, well, <clears throat> I could and was, it, was it clamped on the, on the road somewhere away from where on, you live? On my drive, which oh, is on also... Your, on your drive? A, which is another no-no, but they don't care. They don't care. He didn't have a summons. He didn't ha have a warrant. He Sorry, he didn't have a warrant of control. He didn't have anything he was supposed to have. So I just kept using letters and letters and letters and got to the point where I was taking them to court. And um, then overnight, the clamp suddenly disappeared. But in the meantime, because, um, you know, it's, you have a little bit of fun with it as well, I was charging £500 an hour for that clamp. So the bill, and plus £250,000 to trespass in the first place, uh, which I'd noticed them before they came to my house. So the bill was over a million pounds by that time. So I'm just waiting for them to settle that bill. <laughs> 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 they haven't done so. Yeah, is, is that why I'm not talking to you from the Bahamas or, so, or somewhere like that? No, I wouldn't have my woolies on. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, so I, I, what I don't understand is what, uh, why did they clamp it on your drive? What was the possible reason they would be clamping your vehicle or your conveyance, I suppose I ought to say, um, uh, on your own property? Well, that's a good point because it's not my own. It's a lease car. So there's two things they did wrong. One, they came on my property and did it. And second, it was the lease car. So it's not even mine. So they right. took control of somebody else's property. So I've just spent a lot of time writing to them pointing this out but it, again i'm testing the system so i'm building up my confidence confidence mm. by doing that and they kept threatening me to come back and break into my house with a locks locksmith and all of these kinds of things which is terrifying mm. but knowing that you've got the law on your side just kept kept cool kept calm kept just plugging away at it and eventually they had to just come back with the tail between their legs and take take that off but even though they were telling me that a judge should allowed them to come to my property they they hadn't so they but, will tell you yeah so what but what was the real what i mean oh you speeding know. oh it was a speeding and because you didn't pay they thought we'll clamp your car i didn't stop. go to court so when you don't i didn't know any better i should have gone to court but i didn't right. know at that time that's why i'm going to court next time for the next one <laughs> um yeah. so the the fine of i don't know 40 or 50 pounds became 800 and something pounds Gosh. and then the the i won't na name the um no. the enforcement agents they add their bill on so that becomes over a thousand pounds for doing 47 in a 40 well um 
when it was a dual carriageway and there was nobody else on the road. Yes, and we've um, all done. I mean, we've all done. You know, I've done plenty of these sort of tiny little misdemeanors. You look at you're looking up at something and uh, or someone's talking to you or whatever it is, or you're or you're being careful of something and you suddenly realise, oh, I've just in order to do that to avert some other danger, I've gone a little bit faster to get round there and the I mean, speed entrapment camera, which is a you know a horrible thing in and of itself, um, yeah. which can cause you a bit of oh blame me there's another blooming camera um we've all done that you know we've all done it and we've all uh, felt it was unfair because there was no it's not like you were driving dangerously at like you know in a 30 mile an hour going 80 and just for the for the kicks yeah, which which absolutely. could of course be dangerous and then that's not responsible is it and and it's not reasonable no, exactly. Um, and, and that's the law. You know, yeah. you have to act responsibly. And I, I didn't harm anyone. There was no chance of harming anybody. And I think where the, if I remember where it might have been, um, there wasn't even any residential area there. So there couldn't be a possibility of anybody walking around either. So yes. Very, very, um, not unfair. It's just against your right. You know, you're allowed yes. to travel and, and we're all responsible. I've been driving for 43 years. Um, it, you can make those judgments yourself. And I suppose that the very the very worst really is that somebody would write to you and say, We notice you went a bit faster than the speed limit, just to let you know that is the sort of it's the safest speed to go. Um and you could just say, Oh right, okay, thanks very much for the observation. You know, it's not really none of your business, but I'll take it on board and you can be very polite and honourable about it. But that really is about the limit of what should have happened, really, isn't it? Yeah. It should be. That would be a reasonable thing to do. Because if um, you're using that particular bit of, you know, um, uh, dual carriageway, and maybe the signage isn't good or, or whatever it yeah. is, you might go, oh, I just didn't... Re I mean, I did that going down to see my son one Christmas, and it was dual carriageway in Southampton, mm -hmm. and everyone was going reasonably fast, and it was just going in the pace thinking that mm -hmm. this was... A, it was a safe speed. It was 40 in a, in a 30, and um, and I was probably going about 38, maybe, because I was not not trying to go over 40. And I was with the children going down to see my, my eldest son. And the next thing is like, oh, there's a speed camera. Oh, blimey. And of course, then it came. And you think, OK, if that had just been, by the way, that's a, four, that's a 30, not a 40. You go, oh, OK, fair enough. I'll, I'll bear that in mind next time. You would have, you know, but no, there was no harm. There was nobody in the way. And, you know, it was well fenced off from the public uh, <clears throat> but you know they made they made money out of it and you went on and I went on one of the courses to uh, tell me I was a naughty person for yes. for going a little faster than I should have done and they probably made a little bit more money out of you for doing that yes absolutely well yeah. they took a day of my life away as it were to to do the course as well as paying for it yeah and intimidating me to make me feel that I was uh, a stupid person and uh, you know, you know all all those sort of you know threats and menaces, which you you just don't need, no, in your in your life. Um, so yeah, so that that so what do we do though? Because right. you mentioned writing, and that seems to be a, um, a now a friend of mine. He's a, a very much a, a writer. He likes to introduce himself. He's very honourable, but he's very firm. And he says, you know, and he starts to state what the situation should be and how they have mistreated him. And he, he's sure it's all going to be sorted out. But he uses the written word, the pen, as the uh, as the tool to get back at them, because effectively that's what they're doing to you, isn't it? With their notices yeah. of of penalties and fines and summonses. Yeah, it can be it can be very difficult to write um, to, especially when you've got a summons, because they're. They, they are frightening. That's how the design is to frighten mm. you and make you feel fearful. But, um, you know, if you know um, the law and what they are and aren't allowed, to, that they're acting under legislation that doesn't apply to you. You know, I know I've heard you say that, Richard, that, you know, you know about that now. Mm. Um, that's a really difficult one to to get to grips with. That legislation does not apply to us unless we consent to it. And you can consent by, um, you know, um, by not objecting to it as well. So you, you, it's a bit of a minefield. You've got to be careful. And there's also with driving, um, there's there's also the potential contract that you have with your driving license. So there's a lot of 
minefields with driving and I would not start your processes of, of fighting back or, or trying to test the system with a driving offence because they are really hard to negotiate mm. and you do end up in court very quickly. Yes. So um, you, don't, you don't want to get into court too quickly until you're no. really confident and you've got a knowledge base of how to deal yeah. with the the legislative process. Yeah. Um, and um, at starting just by writing, you know, your own words, but just never write anything that you cannot back up. Never make a statement in writing or verbally that you cannot 100% back up with your own proof or evidence. You can ask questions. That's completely different because asking a question, you're looking for information and then they have to back up what they say. So uh, try and word a question like, um, you know, why have you sort of done what you've just done? Um, but you don't have to write in any template form. You can just write your own words, your own unique way. You don't have to be brilliantly clever or anything like that. I certainly am not. Just what happened and what have they done and just that you know just write that down in your own way and if you start following templates that can get to the point where they have an automatic response because they're seeing this template all the time yes. so every time we write in our own way they have to really think about their response and it's a bit harder for them so they, they can learn to deal with a template but they can't learn to deal with us as unique individuals so it's best to use your creativity. One of the things that I've learnt is that in legislation, in, in the legal statutes and acts or in court, there are 12 presumptions of law. And these presumptions mean that they will assume a 12 things about mm -hmm. you, that you, but they don't tell you what these things are, so you don't know. So as you go into court, unless you rebut them, and say, oh, by the way, these 12 presumptions don't actually apply by me, you have then not given a contract. And there's a, a, it seems to be a, a weird way that they'll say, well, as soon as you step into the court or it, answer our letters, unless you've actually said no to these things, you've contracted with us. Right. And, and so, but once you know that very simple thing and you can say, oh, by the way, I don't... Uh, I, I'm rebutting the 12 presumptions of law, which are this, 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 and this. They don't apply to me, by the way. Thank you very much for offering them. Very nice of you, very kind, um, very enticing, but I, I, they don't apply to me because that's not the law. Is that, is that fair? Is that a, a... That's fair. I think I'm going to be a little bit pedantic here. Please do. We, we think there are 12 presumptions, but how do we know there aren't 15 or 20? So we aren't told everything. This is the occult. And by occult, I mean secret, not, you know, what we believe um, occult is. So I would just say I rebut all presumptions you may have ah, about Ah, yes, very good. Because we don't know how many they might there might be. Yeah, yeah, so there might, yes. No, I hadn't thought of that. It's very good. I like that. It's well worth saying because if there aren't any or there are 100, then, you know, it doesn't do any harm to say that. No, yes, absolutely. And I don't absolutely. think all of the judges and magistrates know know about them themselves. I think it's until you they get, get to the higher levels that they get more in. I think we're finding this information coming down through, you know, people who've realised it's it's not good uh, from higher levels and they're just let, letting that information filter down. Otherwise, so, how would we know about it? Yes. So the more the more people, obviously, that do this, the, the more times people judges and barristers will see this coming in front of them which will make them question what they're doing if if they don't believe you know it's like one or two doing it. it's like oh well, these people are a bit you know a bit old-fashioned a bit mad they sort of believe in mystical things and all this what's this natural law rubbish we know what statues and acts are but if loads of people are saying so well, i don't understand why are so many people believing all this well maybe there is i'll go and have a look and then they may educate themselves and go, oh, blimey, didn't realise that. But it's exactly what happens with police officers as well. When they come up to you and say, you know, you see that they think they're in charge of you and they have all this power mm. and they are just stood down, completely stood down, that's going to shock them when they go away and start to think about that. And again, it's not to embarrass or humiliate anybody. It's education. 
and putting right what's wrong and it's wrong what they're doing so when they try to impose legislation upon you me sovereign woman you sovereign man um they're not it's wrong so we we are educating them and, and putting the wrong right that's all this is about so if they go away and think gosh why did that not work i couldn't do anything with that person with that gosh, we shouldn't say person hmm. i've said it twice um uh, that individual it didn't work why did it not work and they go away and think about that and they're going to stop believing in their boss and think i need to think about figure what out what just happened to me here because i don't want to be humiliated like that again so that's yeah. how it works so i had a conversation with my son who's 33 this year and i we, I was just talking to him about the ULES expansion in London and saying that, you know, although I haven't really covered that in my videos and there's plenty of people doing that sort of thing, I was saying, oh, have you not heard about the protests? And he said, well, not really. I'd, but he didn't understand what the problem was. And I was saying, well, you know, it seems to be a, a, an immoral law that you're going to charge people. Anyway, the point was we went on this sort of way and he was sort of shutting down. So I thought I'll try a different tactic with him just to see if I could open his mind in a different way. And so I said, do you agree that we're all born free? And he said, yes. And I said, and if we're born free, then presumably nobody is above the law. Do you think that, that there is nobody above the law? And he said, yes. So I said, well, how can another person then tell you what you should or shouldn't do? And he said, ah, well, if you take that to it, its logical conclusion, he said, is we'll just have anarchy. And I thought, well, do you know what anarchy really means? And uh, but he 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 just thought that meant everyone would just do whatever they like and there would be terrible disruption. And that's where you sort of go, are you sure? But he was so indoctrinated with if people do what they like, um, that we're all going to turn into rapists and murderers and fast drivers. And you think that's not how society actually works. So no. that was an interesting thing. So was that good, a good argument to have? Even if you were arguing with a policeman, you could use the same argument and say, yeah, I respect your, your costume, which is very nice. And I don't know what theatrical shop you got that from, but it's, it's lovely. Um, but, you know, no man can be above the law. But the policeman obviously thinks, well, I'm enforcing the law. Well, what law are you enforcing? The perfect arguments. I like the tactics with your son there. And of course, we know that just to what anarchist really is, uh, as I've learned over the last couple of years, it means you have no ruler. Mm. And that's what a sovereign is. A sovereign has no ruler. You rule yourself. You can make your own rules, regulations and laws up for yourself and this for, for your land, your territory. And this is this is my land. I am my land, my territory. I make my own rules up for my territory. This is all ties in with the sovereign state of mind. It's a sovereign state. This is my sovereign state. And um, you have no ruler. You make your own rules. And of course, you stick to the law. You don't cause any harm, loss or injury to anybody else. And my rights end where somebody else's begin. So where their land starts, so this person standing, individual standing next to me, it's very hard to not say person, mm -hmm. um, is it, they make their own rules up for they, themselves. So we cannot, um, you know, step on each other's rights without causing harm. Now, we, we, we mentioned, I wasn't going to go down the person thing, but because you've mentioned it a couple of times and people going, oh, right. I wonder, I wonder why we shouldn't say person. And this All was, right. this was st the start of my understanding of this um because i made a video where i was saying you know leave me alone I, i'm sovereign i am a person and then yeah. a very nice gentleman who i have a lot of conversations with called Stuart, said right. richard you're not a person <laughs> and i yeah. thought and i said to him oh don't be silly that's just semantics but um it's not just semantics which i have now since well, learned people argue it both ways so I try to avoid using person because it always kicks up a bit of an argument. Mm. So um, if you if you speak to Mark Horn, who is Peacekeepers founder, uh, along with, do you know, peacekeepers.org.uk? Yes. Uh, um, I think I can't remember. I think I'm doing an interview with Mark. So oh, it would be interesting wonderful. to talk to him about it. 
he's amazing and he has started the peacekeepers up and he gives free it completely free education tuition on how to be sovereign and how to deal with all of these things that we're talking about but great website and um, i'm glad you're talking to him he's amazing um i can't remember what i was saying now sorry we, 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 yeah, right, about okay. people arguing so, person different ways person. well then ask him about person because he he's like we are all we're, we're persons get over it uh it's just a distraction but there's also the legal fiction person which is a um a state created sort of thing um corporation corporate legal entity and that's the person can have all of this legislation applied to it because it's not real or alive. Right. And it's something that you join to, contracted to by your behavior or by registering with the state. So that's a whole massive argument uh, or belief, which I, I, I'm there with that one. It fits a lot of the things that I believe. But um, a lot of people would also say, just get over it. It's substance, not form. So don't, don't get bogged down with the, the details of that. I will ask him. I will ask him about that when when I get him on. Um, I mean, it's a it's it's a fascinating because I think people are beginning to sort of get a sense that what we have is not right. Yeah. And at this time, since the pandemic, uh, in particular, has been a moment in which we've seen huge abuse of power, yes. and people have acquiesced to it because they didn't know any different. But because so many people have acquiesced to it and because now it seems loads and loads of things are being um, rolled out that we wouldn't order, we, no, no one's asked for the 15 minute cities and the net zeros and the digital banks and all, you know, all of these things. And yet everything's to be ca coming down at huge speed. And of course, we've all got a sense of, well, I say we all got people in the peace movement and freedom movement, I suppose, have got a sense of where it's coming from beyond government and who's who's dictating this sort of thing for a globalist agenda um but but I, in a way i think the pandemic has been i mean it's been tr tragic and absolutely dreadful for many many people but it's also been a gift because it's focused us on this huge tragedy of what it is and how it was implemented and the subsequent medical interventions and stuff it's focused a lot of people and, and waking people up. And it's it's slow, but it's it's growing like no other time, I think. I agree. And I think we needed it to realise how bad things actually are. And if this had been sorted out a year ago and we, you know, got through it, I don't I, I think that would have been too early. I think, unfortunately, we have to see the horror yes. um, before the half awakes um, will, I don't know, you know, what to, to call that um before they realized that we weren't just mad um we actually we you know this was really happening um before things get back to a good place again they have to really see that it really was as bad as we know it is another observation i've i've started to think about is people always say ah oh, but people are sheep and they just do all this mm -hmm. but i think that's an advantage because where we start to lead and and show people the way out, you want everybody else to sort of go, oh. And as they see more and more people go through the door of freedom uh, or knowing their rights or understanding the law and actually being able to challenge it and have a better life and not have the stress and all the, 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 the nasty penal government legislation on their backs, the, the, the sheep such as the horrible term it is, as people realise, oh, we, we must follow these people because they obviously know something. So in a way, it's a good thing that the, a, a large majority of people will follow because it will give the movement um, a snowball effect. Yeah, and once we get them through, once we all get through the, you know, the, the gap in the, in the pen or whatever it is we're all in, then um, we, we can all have a, a better life at the other side and, and empower yeah I, I don't want to call people sheep but no no I, I suppose it's it's just yeah. the, it's a it's a word that's banded about that that people yeah. you know they say they're a sheep or and they're asleep and but it, in a way it's kind of that that once people realize that that you know people want something which means something to them 
and people follow like convenience don't they they t- it's like water they take the um the easiest route well s- as soon as people realize this is the easiest route and it's much more beneficial and it's convenient and it's a good life the majority of people will will, will follow light sheep and I, I appreciate that anybody who thinks that's you know been know. I've been offensive I'm not meaning it like that I I'm know you're using, not yeah I know also, and, Richard, but that's a good just, thing for us just mentioned convenience mm. um that we, as a sovereign being and and how we become unsovereign is that we have given up responsibility for our lives um to convenience I know it's not your meaning wasn't your meaning uh we 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 wouldn't have a clue how to get our own food where mm-hmm. to find water, uh, how to build a house, the shelter, how to protect ourselves. We have no clue because we've handed responsibility and health, our health care. We've handed responsibility for that over. Yes. And we have we have to claim back our responsibility to get control and stop the fear. Yes. So that's another another thing that was well worth mentioning. Yeah, because we're in, in a way we've become like children yeah. and we've the we've seen big government, big tech mm-hmm big farmer big everything as our parents and we've Absolutely. we've sort of you know sidetracked everything to them and said oh well the government should sort this out instead of taking responsibility for ourselves which is a very um a very simple thing to do but it's also very powerful i think and i've been i've been expa- you know as i've learned this i've just felt myself saying it you know you just start talking the language and you say oh, where did this come from i was never like this before but you suddenly realize that the the power is within and 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 you're you, you know you can't help yourself once you've seen that light you can't turn back can you no because you, you no go on sorry right. i don't know if if how much time we've got but if there's any chance i've got a couple of slides my two most powerful slides that i have in my presentation we must see those sorry yes are I, you sure yeah yeah let's see okay. if we can get this to work so I'm going on full screen here and I share the screen. Oh, blimey. Here we go. Now, what do I do here? You probably need to make me a host or something so that I can share my screen. Yes. Um, screen one, screen two. No, wait a minute. I have done. I've done this once before and I can't You're seeing remember. all your... All your secrets now, Richard. All my secrets. There's no... Well, there's nothing secret there. <laughs> it's all a load of old... Um, not to worry if you can't yeah there is a way can you get it onto your screen you have to make me host so that i can share my screen right if it's on your screen on your oh i see okay let me let me see unless it's your camera that might it might be hang on a minute there's a share share. oh it's oh here we go your i'm sharing my oh yes here we go i just i remember now how do i change this I'm testing you now, aren't I? You are. No, it's all right. People can right. always fast forward or just sit here and amuse themselves. Uh, <laughs> watching you struggle. Watching us, yeah. I'm just trying to... And they're going, Richard, you're so... So that's stop sharing. You are... Sh- I'm staring at... Hang on. You need to make me host or co-host. And I've done it once it. before where I just switched, let the other person share the screen. Um, and annotate... Remote control, apps, more, chat, security, stop the camera. <laughs> what about participants? Well, oh, yeah, here we go. Let's see what that says. Invite, copy, security. Does, it, done... does security let you sh- let me share my screen? I can't remember how to do it. There will be people going. Yeah, people will be shouting. What you yeah. have to do is... Because I, re- you see, what people don't probably don't realise, I'm not recording this within. Okay, um, don't worry. It's it doesn't matter. I can just may, maybe mention it then, perhaps quickly. Yes. Okay. It's a I've shame got, because one I've of them. I've got to get you back um, on the screen now because all I can see is. How do I do this? Oh. I've, oh, stop share. There we go. That's that's done something very strange. Hang on a minute. I'm going to go to I'm going to go to me, and multiple advanced sharing. One person, multiple participants can share. There you try go. that. Does that yeah, work? It should do. Let's have a look. All right, I can now share my screen. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm just trying to get back. Yeah, here we go. Brilliant. Right. 
Can you see that now? Let me just put it onto presentation mode and make it the bigger. Right. I don't know if you can you see the whole screen. Um, I can I've got see most higher of it. Up. Okay. Let me see. Oh, gone too far now. Um, it, sh it should be enough just to get the gist at least. Um, hierarchy of law and jurisdiction. This is this is the hierarchy of how we truly stand in law. And right at the top is natural law. I'll do it very quickly. There's a lot more to this. Underneath that is sovereign man and woman. That's us as we are. And then <clears throat> we have created laws, the rule of law, which means we're all equal and nobody is above the law. Our constitution and the law of the land, including the common law, We've derived that from natural law, and it has to align with natural law, otherwise it's unlawful. Then we created government to administer the realm on our behalf, but of course we've kept took, taken our eye off the ball, and they have. Um, every government will write itself into ultimate power if they are left unchecked, and that's exactly what's happened. They create government agents. And then all of those other things at, at the bottom, that's us as registered contracted beings, taxpayer, occupier, resident, driver, voter, citizen. We all think citizen's a good thing, but we are diminished status when we are a citizen. That's the creation of the state. Now, the hierarchy of law can only have power from above. Um, there can be no, no power going up. It can only come down or authority, I mean. So the highest authority is us on the planet after our creator. And then the government is our creation. So they have no authority over us whatsoever. We only have authority over them. Hmm. And then the, the creators of the, the creations of the state, um, they are even lower down and the government can have authority over them if, if you go into your diminished state. That's a very, very rushed um, way of explaining that to you. But you can see, I mean, like just looking at that, you know, it, it yeah. makes perfect sense. You've got yes. the, the creator, whatever, natural law, universal law, which, which, you know, as man or woman, we can't change how the creator or how things have been created. Absolutely. Where we can start to work things out is as a sovereign man and woman and work out, actually, we don't want to hurt each other, we respect each other and all of that. Mm. But sometimes it's useful to have some sort of administration just to help things along a bit so we've created the government and the agents mm -hmm. and it's interesting what you you said you know we should have the power over the government but the government seem to think for whatever reason uh mm -hmm. power corrupts of course um that they're in control of us and can dictate everything and so we have this tyrannical situation and then the last and bit the government is over the co contracted people. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah, so if we contract with them, then we we are bound. We've found ourselves bind within their contract, but we don't have to contract with them. No, and they, they create this illusion, <clears throat> excuse me, through legislation, and that's turned the whole hierarchy upside down. And uh, Edward Fitzgerald mentioned that on, on the programme yeah. with you. It's completely turned upside down. And they've done it through legislation and the illusion that's created through yes. our, you know, and backed up by our <clears throat> education and media. And I have one more slide. Yeah, no, please it, go for it. It took me a long time to to um, get this one together. This is the sword, you know, a sword, the, the sword of justice. I, I've used the sword as the example. And most, these are all of the um, legislation and that does work and, and, and it, enshrines um, everything I've said about the law and our rights. These are all the different pieces and um, people might have to screenshot this. And it, of course, it's got the uh, Bill of Rights and all of those other kinds of things in there. But everything that William Keats mentions and everything that Edward Fitzgerald mentions and other people, <clears throat> these are all of the um, constitutional documents that are in, in here. And some of them are very, very recent you know we've got the fraud act that helps us the police reform act from and the equality act all very recent ones but the very most powerful thing that we have is this word and it's no we just say no that's the most powerful word in our language and it's everything i've said to you is backed up in all of these these um statutes and bills that are written on there so wow. we've got a lot we've got a lot of stuff there to back us up when we go to court and then when we're dealing with, with the people who are trying to enforce things on us. 
I'll, I'll stop sharing now. So some okay. of some of some of that. Um, now I've switched the. Uh, hang on, if I do, I don't know. So some of some of that. Sorry, my screen has has got variations of you for some reason. I'm not quite sure what's going on. I'll I'll so sort that out. Um, there's lots of me. There's lots of you. <laughs> it's, I I'd rather quite, look at you, Richard. I know. I don't know how I've managed. Oh, it was in that in that thing. But uh, well, we're going to finish up now. So I'll just try yeah. and keep it on you there, um, and I'll work out what nonsense I've done to it. A lot of those was it was a sort of combination of the legislation acts and yeah. statutes, but also what what we deem as common law and and agreements and treaties, like with the the um, the, the Magna Carta and things like that. So all our of that... forefathers, our forefathers have been through this. Yes. So they've written these documents. They're all there for us, you know, and we can use whatever we can use to our advantage. Just use it. Use it. Yeah. Ruth, thank you so much for uh, taking well. us through this journey and and unshackling many people. It's so. it's not an easy thing. You've got to be no. quite brave, but it is our rights. And it is the law. And the unshackling, since you mentioned it, um, some people have a, a top tier prison cell. A lot of us are in the bottom tier. It's the top tier ones that are the hardest to, to get away, to, you know, get them out of that prison. How, and so just the lawyers you... and the, the yes. lawyers and the doctors and the people who have been extremely successful in this system. They don't want to let go and be no. in the bottom tier potentially, which they won't be. They'll be much freer than that. But they don't see that. So they're yeah. the hardest ones to deal with. It's a fascinating. We'll have to get you back. So you you run courses and things, don't you? Um, so uh, do you have a website that I can point people to, or they can I, find out more? I have a website. It's very fledgling, and I haven't got a huge amount of time to to fix it. But you can get in touch with me through the website. It's sovereignnaturalempowerment.com. Sovereignnaturalempowerment.com. I'll put a link in the description. Okay. Ruth, thank you so much for talking Welcome. and spending um, the afternoon with me. It's been absolutely fascinating and very empowering. Yes. And um, I'm going to be talking more about this. And, and of course, mm -hmm. more people are uh, waking up to this and realizing mm -hmm. this, this very simple freedom is ours and but very, very powerful. I really appreciate it. And thank you for everything you do, Richard, because you're so calm and very easy to listen to. Uh, uh, you're really helping us to oh. get this message across. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Uh -huh. uh, brilliant. I mean well, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Another wonderful interview. Uh, really, really interesting. Very exciting and empowering. And if you um, do check out Ruth's uh, website, as I say, it may only be fledgling, but it will grow, I'm sure. And um, more power to Ruth and to all of you who are attempting to claim back our freedom and, and stay within the real law. Uh, I'll be back again with another interview um, very soon. But in the meantime, thank you f to Ruth. Sorry about the shenanigans with the screen. Um, <laughs> and from me, goodbye. <laughs>